G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So I've done my full fish room tour for 2020 and you guys have seen all the fish that I have in the room. But now I thought I should do another in-depth species profile for you guys. The last one I did was on my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold. And if you haven't seen that, you can watch it right here. However, today I thought I should do an in-depth species profile on my Neo Lamprologus Brevis. I've bred a lot of these fish now and I feel comfortable enough to share with you guys what I've seen with the fish and uh, what I've learned over the few months that I've had them and bred them. So why don't we get straight into it guys and I'll show you what I do. So like the last species profile I did, which was on my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold, Neo Lamprologus Brevis are also dwarf cichlids which breed in shells and are only found in Lake Tanganyika in Africa. I love these little shellies. The first thing you notice when you see these little fish is their somewhat unique bulky shape and large mouths. Males have a pretty menacing look and also have pretty huge teeth for their size. They are a cream light coloured brown fish and have some nice vertical barring down the sides of their body with iridescent purple lines under their eyes. While they aren't the most colourful fish in the world, they make up for that with their interesting character and behaviour. In terms of temperament and in contrast to the Lamprologus ocellatus, these guys are nowhere near as aggressive. And for example, the Brevis, they tolerate numerous generations of fry in their tank, but Ockies on the other hand will at most tolerate about one generation of fry with their newly hatched brood. As long as their tank is large enough, that is. I also wouldn't recommend keeping different shellies together in the same tank, especially if you intend to breed them. I do have an excess gold Ockie male with four Brevis in one of my 4x2x2-foot tanks, and he bosses those four Brevis around, and that is in a big tank. These Brevis are only in here temporarily though, and are getting sold soon. Brevis males can grow to just over 5 centimetres, while the females grow to around 3 centimetres. I wouldn't go below a tank size of around 40 litres for a pair of these fish though, especially if the tank is taller than it is wide or long. These guys pretty much stick to the bottom of the tank and prefer a large footprint of space than a high, deep tank. Currently, I have three adults in a shallow two foot long by two foot wide by 14 inch high tank, and they are best kept in a harem uh, with at least two females to every male. Now with Lake Tanganyika being the longest lake in the world and the second deepest, it has very, very stable water parameters. That means that cichlids from Lake Tanganyika don't do well with infrequent large water changes. So do regular, smaller water changes, that is weekly 15-20% to 20 water changes, and they'll really benefit from that. I age my water and aerate it for at least 4 days before using it for water changes. But the reason that I do this is to give the buffer and cichlid lake salt that I add to the water enough time to become soluble in that water. Regarding aging water, it does remove chlorine that might be in your tap water, but it does not remove chloramine. Chloramine is obviously not safe for your fish and will also kill beneficial bacteria that you have in your filter. Chloramine won't evaporate out of your tap water no matter how long you wait. So make sure you add some sort of water conditioner to your water change water before you add it to your aquarium. I use Seacom Prime and this half litre bottle only cost me about $27 delivered off eBay. Prime is one of the more readily available water conditioners. However, there are other brands on the market that do the same thing and maybe for a little cheaper, such as API, Aquan, Blue Planet, etc. Also try to ensure that the water change water that you're adding to the aquarium has the same pH, hardness and temperature as your aquarium water. So to minimise the shock to the fish. The pH in Lake Tanganyika is very high and is around 9. However, this system is running at around 8.5. The lake also has hard water and I've been using Seacom's Rift Lake Salt to keep my water hard. My tap water is pretty soft, coming straight out of the tap. I only add the Rift Lake salt to my water change water though. Do not add it to water that you're using to replace evaporated water from your tank. I feed these guys a variety of frozen foods and high quality pellets. This includes brine shrimp, mysa shrimp and daphnia, and they prefer those foods in that order. The pellet feed I've been using so far is made by a company called Tropical. They make a Tanganyikan pellet specific for Tanganyikan cichlids. I just soak a couple pellets in aquarium water for at least 10 minutes before feeding so that they soften up and it makes it easier for the fish to eat. Alternate what food you feed these guys daily just to ensure that they're getting a wide range of vitamins and minerals that they need to grow into healthy adult fish. Three fish is all you really need to get a lot of brevis fry quickly and I recommend at minimum you buy at least three to better your chances at getting a pair. This is a young trio and I've only owned them since mid-November 2019. 
It is now the end of March 2020 and I already have at least 100 fry. These guys just keep spawning every few days with the male alternating between his two females. When I first got this trio, he would pretty much solely stay with the female at the front of the tank. He would hardly leave her side. Over in the last month or so, I've noticed that he regularly swims over to the other female and has been hanging out with her a lot lately. Also, as you can see, these guys have a number of shells to pick from, but they have stayed in the two shells that they came in when I bought them. I have never seen either female enter any other shells in this tank. With that, it seems that once a female picks a shell, she will live and breed in that shell for months, provided she doesn't outgrow it. And this seems to be the case of my brevis. Females will bury their chosen shell in the sand the way they see fit and will dive into it whenever danger is present. However, I've read articles online that state they dig a lot, but my trio hardly ever do. My guys don't dig anywhere near as much as my gold ockies, and my gold ockies don't dig anywhere near as much as, say, multifasciatus. When my females are ready to spawn, they swim around the opening of their shell and attempt to entice the male to enter their shell. I sometimes also see the females I have seemingly competing for the male's attention. Now the female I have at the front of the tank is the male's main female. Whenever I suddenly walk into the fish room or walk past their tank, he darts to her and they both dive into their shell. He also sleeps in that shell with this female. The female at the back though is pretty much his second female and she always hangs at the back of the tank. Whenever this female comes to the front of the tank, the male chases her away back to her shell. He also does his best to keep both his females away from each other. I don't recall ever seeing the females fight with each other, but I wouldn't rule it out from happening. I have hardly ever seen them spawning, but I do think they're spawning in this footage. Funnily enough though, here he is spawning with the second female, which is even more rare for me to see, as like I said before, he usually is with the female at the front of the tank. I first noticed Brevis fry in the tank about a month after I bought them which is around mid-September 2019, and geez, were they tiny. I was surprised by how slender they were, and also how camouflaged they are against the pool filter sand that I use as substrate. I was also surprised at the lack of care the parents give their fry. From pretty much the moment the fry are free swimming, they are kicked out of their shell, and the parents seemingly play no further role in bringing up their brood. I find that if fry do go near the parents' shells, that they are chased away, like I said earlier, the parents do tolerate multiple generations of fry in one tank together, and the older fry don't seem to eat the younger siblings. However, I have seen the larger ones occasionally chasing the smaller fry away. Now before the fry get to around 1cm, which is about a month to 6 weeks old, make sure you catch them and remove them to another aquarium, as the male will chase them down. I recently learnt that lesson the hard way when I woke up one morning to find a chewed up baby who was one of the larger ones in the aquarium. I was really surprised by this and disappointed that I had let it happen, so move them out to a grow-out tank before they get to that size. I've been told that Brevis fry are slow growers, however, I don't believe this to be the case. The fry that I have here, they were born in mid-December 2019 and are already 2cm long. To me, these guys grow fast, but that is probably because I'm used to seeing how slow gold ockies grow. My largest oki fry are just over 2cm and are about 7 months old, yet the largest Brevis fry I have at that size already, but grew to that size in less than half that time. Like the gold ocky fry, I feed the brevis fry, microworms, baby brine shrimp, and the small pieces of mice shrimp that first come off just as you're defrosting the cubes, as well as high quality pellets which are crushed and soaked in aquarium water for at least 10 minutes. Like the parents, you want to ensure that the fry are getting a varied diet so that they get a wide range of vitamins and minerals that they need to grow. Otherwise, if you constantly feed them one type of food, the fry will die off after a few months. You can see here I have them in grow-out tanks with a double-headed sponge filter. However, this system runs off a central sump as well, so the entire system is holding almost 3,000 litres of water. Due to the large volume of water, I am able to keep my water parameters very stable, which is exactly what these guys need. It is more important to keep your water chemistry stable rather than trying to chase ideal water parameters and having fluctuating temperature, pH and hardness. So just bear that in mind when you're keeping not just Brevis, but any other cichlid from Lake Tanganyika. So there you have it guys, my in-depth species profile on Neolemporologus Brevis. I uh, just want to quickly also say, hope you guys are keeping safe out there, uh, self-isolating, keeping those hands clean, because this coronavirus pandemic is really getting out of hand now. I can't believe what's happening in the world, it's just nuts. So I really hope you, all you guys out there are safe. Um, 
Also, if you found this video informative, please hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Really appreciate it. All right, guys, I'll wrap this one up now. Thanks, Lisa, for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.